Welcome back everybody. Today, I'm gonna to introduce financial statement analysis. We are going to talk about what financial statement analysis is, why do we perform financial statement analysis, what are some of the sources of noise in the financial statements that we're trying to tease out through financial statement analysis, and then lastly, we're gonna just introduce at least some of the common valuation techniques that are usually the output or the end process of financial statement analysis. Let's get started. First, what is financial statement analysis? Financial statement analysis is a method by which users extract information from financial statements to answer questions about the company. So that could be all types of questions and we have all types of financial statement analysis. That could be investors, what determining what an estimated value of a company is for valuation purposes. It could be lenders determining the credit worthiness of a company, regulators evaluating a company's activities for whether they pass regulation or not. Managers can you do financial statement analysis for internal purposes, whether they're evaluating the performance of a segment in order to make managerial decisions, or for external purposes, where they're evaluating potential uh, investment or acquisition uh, opportunities for their company. Other companies can perform financial statement analysis, whether that's competitors looking for strategic information on your financial statements, customers looking for the reliability and stability of your company and potential uh, sources of their product, uh, suppliers evaluating your credit worthiness and the stability of your company as a customer of theirs, employees may do financial statement analysis, whether they're doing wage negotiations or just evaluating the stability of the company who's paying their salary. Courts, attorneys, experts with the court are also doing financial statement analysis. A lot of times that pertains to calculating damages. So what we're gonna primarily focus on today is investors. That's probably the most common and probably the largest area of financial statement analysis. It's determining the value of a company is typically a little more difficult than determining its credit worthiness. Uh, I'm not downplaying credit analysis. I did that for many years, but investors is a little bit different. And most of the analyses that people are talking about when you take a financial statement analysis course at college, uh, the primary focus is going to be an investor focus. So investors use financial statement analysis to determine firm value. This is the most prevalent objective of financial statement analysis, as I just mentioned. Financial statement analysis is a core aspect of what we would call fundamental analysis. Now, fundamental analysis is a little bit different than other types of analysis that don't rely as heavily or at all, in some cases, on financial statements, and some of them don't even rely on company information. For instance, technical analysis is actually looking at price movements to determine the appropriate value or future price movements of the company you're looking at investing in. There's also index and passive investors. They don't use financial statement analysis or fundamental analysis at all. They are evaluating individual companies. They're taking a broad based perspective. From one sense, they're kind of freeloaders on the analysis that other people are doing in the market. And then you just have intuitive investors that are just investing based on how they feel regarding whether it's the market or a specific company. Um, whether how much financial statement analysis that involves is really up to how people develop their own intuition. So now that we've talked about the users of financial statement analysis, our primary focus being investors and in their determination of fundamental value of a company, we're gonna look at the components of analysis. Step one is understanding the business. Now, part of that is going to involve examining their financial statements, but that's not the first place you start. You don't start by opening up a company, a company's 10K, for instance, and looking at their financial statements. You should probably start by figuring out what does this company do? So the first step is understanding the company's business model. In other words, how does the company make money? Or at least how does the company say that it makes money? Because that's hopefully how they actually are making money. This involves evaluation of the company's product line, of how the geog geographic distribution of that product line, the breadth of the product line, who their customers are, how that product is being brought to market. So are they a manufacturer? Are they a distributor? And that brings in this notion of what 
is the firm's expertise? How are they adding value? And what is their primary expertise in the value creation model? Is it in their manufacturing processes? Is it in their distribution, their marketing, their supply chain? Any number of ways companies can make money and that's the expertise that they bring. You're also gonna look at composition of the industry. So their competitors, their suppliers, their customers, how that interacts with the company. And lastly, kind of a political, legal, regulatory environment analysis. Like some companies, if you looked at financial services, banks, insurance companies are highly regulated. That drives a lot of their value creation. It limits what they can do as a business. It limits who their customers are. And that's something that needs to be brought into your evaluation of a company and an understanding of the company's business model. Now, understanding their business is key. The financial statement analysis part comes after you have a solid understanding of the business. You layer on top of that the financial statements of the business. That provides clarity on how each one of those factors, the product, how it's brought to market, what their expertise is, the industry, political, legal, regulatory environment. The financial statements provide clarity on how those factors contribute to firm performance and thus firm value. So once you understand the business, you can then dive into the financial statements and it provides another layer and it helps translate your understanding of the business into a financial return or a firm value. And that's where financial statement analysis really comes into shine. So an example of this, if you're talking about a company launching a new product, for instance, well, you need to understand what the product is, what market, who they're selling it to, whether it, they're successful at launching products. And a lot of that is going to come, one, from understanding the product in the business, but the second piece is, are they successful? What's their performance in launching products? And that we're gonna get out of our financial statement analysis piece. So that's how that feeds into this. So in determining this value, we are going to try to distinguish in our financial statements what I'm gonna call the distinguishing the signal from the noise. Now, the goal of financial statement analysis is to um, clear away the noise in a company's performance and find the true signal. That true signal can then be used to determine firm value. There are any number of ways to do this. The noise is going to vary a lot. We'll talk a little about what, what kind of creates the noise here in a minute. But that's the main goal. We're trying to distinguish the signal from the noise, the signal being the core aspect of what we think is driving the value of that company. But we need to get rid of the noise. So <clears throat> the noise basically makes the signal difficult to interpret. Financial statement analysis strips that noise away. So what is that noise? Well, in financial statements, there's a couple of things. Some of them are built into the process and just financial statements and accounting, general accepted accounting standards in general are driving and creating some of that noise. Some of it is from outside of financial statements. Now, some of these sources of noise, management bias, right? Management managers are typically optimistic, potentially overly optimistic. That is going to feed into the financial statements in terms of management's estimates of things. Now, hopefully those are being curbed through say audits, through the, the accountants in the own, their own business, through over time and expertise of the company itself can reduce bias, but there is still bias in financial statements. That is noise that's making it difficult to figure out the true signal or the true performance of the company in terms of determining a value of the company. The other, other things, general purpose financial statements. The fact that we are using what we call general purpose financial statements also creates noise. General purpose financial statements are designed to provide information to all types of users. Yes, investors are one of those user sets, but so are creditors and bondholders and employees and any number of people are going to be using these financial statements. Thus, there's a lot of information in financial statements that doesn't pertain to what you're looking for or what you're looking at. So you need to basically extract the information from general purpose financial statements and basically create a very special purpose financial statement or a special purpose financial analysis that allows you to determine firm value if you're an investor, for instance. Not the, similarly to the general purpose notion is this idea of completeness. 
Financial statements err on the side of completeness. Gap requires disclosure and requires the breakout of information for every company. That causes or introduces a lot of noise because some things the company is going to disclose or discuss that don't matter for that company. I wouldn't say they're immaterial, but in the current environment, they may not matter. Now, that doesn't mean they'll never matter, but it may not mean in this current environment they matter or for the analysis that you're doing, it doesn't matter. So you're needing to extract only the information from the financial statements that you need and that you think's pertinent for this point in time and for this company. And that's reducing the noise and helping you clear up that signal of value. Next, we're going to talk about confirmatory versus predictive value. This is going the whole way back to our conceptual framework of accounting in that financial statements are proposed to find both confirmatory value telling us what has happened with the company as well as predictive value and now allowing us to predict what will happen in the future. Now, if we're doing financial statement analysis from a valuation standpoint, we're almost only concerned about what's going to happen in the future. Well, financial statements also have a bunch of confirmatory information in there about what did happen. Well, if we want value as of today, we are more focused on predictive than confirmatory. So we, we end up stripping out a lot of the things that are in there from a confirmatory value standpoint. For instance, if a company lost a big lawsuit or there was a, a natural disaster, right? Those are all things that happened in the past. Understanding how those things impacted the company is important. But if I'm trying to predict how, how the company is going to do in the future, I don't want to include there in there a giant loss because of a natural disaster, unless I expect the natural disaster to happen every year, right? I'm extracting that information out. Again, that confirmatory value is actually noise in the context of determining a valuation of a company. The last item we're going to talk is just basically accrual versus cash basis accounting. Now, there's been study, good dozens of studies, actually probably hundreds of studies that have examined accrual versus cash basis accounting over the last 50 years. In general, accrual basis accounting is considered a better predictor of future cash flows, but it is still noisy, right? We have depreciation. A lot of your models, your discounted cash flow models are going to take depreciation out. Does that mean that depreciation shouldn't be in accounting? No, it just means it might introduce noise into the determination of value of a company. So we're gonna take that something like that out depending on what model we're actually using to determine value. Again, we're just trying to reduce the noise and find the true signal on which we can establish a valuation for the company. The most critical thing of all of this, and if you haven't picked up on it yet, I'm gonna tell you right now, you must know accounting and how the numbers in the financial statements are created and what goes into them to effectively distinguish between the noise and the signal. If you don't know what's in a number in the financial statements, you're not gonna be able to figure out whether it, how much bias it might include and whether you should take it out of your analysis or include it in your analysis. That's very difficult to do if you don't know what the number even represents. So it's critical to understand how the financial statements get constructed in order to then deconstruct them and use the pieces of them that you need. That is the importance of knowing your accounting, even if you're not in the job of preparing financial statements. So the last thing I wanted to touch on is just valuation techniques. Once we've, deter once we've broken down and know this general idea is just trying to figure out the signal or the performance of the company and get rid of the noise, there's all kinds of valuation techniques out there. If you move on and take a financial statement analysis course, you'll spend lots of time working through each type of valuation technology. So, but the, they all have the same goal. The goal of evaluation technology is once you've, you, you strip away the noise, you find the signal and you use the signal to somehow generate a, a um, estimation of what the value of the company is. There's two broad categories of these, or at least I'm gonna use two broad categories of these. One would be non-forecasting methods. This would be determining value based on like comparable companies, like what the other, what's a company very similar to ours trading at or what's their stock selling for. Um, you can use valuation multiples so if, for instance, whatever most companies are being valued at, say, two times revenue right now, well, that's just a valuation multiple. 
we can use that to determine a value. And lastly, you can do an asset-based valuation. Some companies, some industries, some points in time, an asset-based valuation actually makes a lot of sense. If you're looking at real estate, for instance, a lot of times that's going to be an asset-based valuation or you're going to use comparables. Um, if you're looking at, say, a private company, a real quick method of figuring out valuation is going to be the multiples method, right? These are non-forecasting methods. They're kind of looking at the current business environment and making an estimation based on what we're seeing in the current business environment. The other method, broad category, is going to be forecasting methods. Forecasting methods are generally far more intense, require a lot more inputs and a lot more work in, in determining the, the signal in the financial statements. These include your discounting methods like dividend or cash flows, where you're just, I say, discounted future cash flows model, where you're using current cash flows and then you're predicting future cash flows for some period of time. And that involves understanding, okay, what do I expect the cash flows to be based on current operations? Um, you can do a residual earnings method or an earnings growth analysis. These are all forecasting methods. So those are valuation technologies, ways in which we try to determine a value by stripping away noise and generating a signal that provides value. So in conclusion, financial statement analysis uses financial statements to answer specific questions. What the question is is going to determine what type of analysis you're doing. Most financial statement analysis focuses on determining firm value in like an investing type scenario. There are many others out there. Credit analysis is an enormous discipline. Uh, it's just very different than determining firm value. Financial statement analysis does provide a link between a firm's business model and the firm's performance. It allows you to evaluate that and then determine what the value of the firm is based on, say, for instance, projected future performance. You extract the information most pertinent to the question being asked, and we utilize technologies to determine the value using this extracted information. Lastly, understanding how financial statements are prepared and understanding each item on the financial statements is critical if you want to do effective uh, financial statement analysis. That pretty much wraps up our quick overview of financial statement analysis. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of structure as you're doing analysis, as you learn different analysis techniques, and as you understand and learn accounting and how that feeds into financial statement analysis. That's all we're going to talk about today. Have a great day and God bless.